Hey, uh, this is filmmaker Alex Rivera again, and welcome to a movie I call Before the Making of Sleep Dealer. The reason I call it Before the Making of is because, number one, we don't have a lot of footage of the actual making of, and two, because I think it's interesting to share stories about what was done to get this project off the ground. And so I'm going to focus a lot on what I put together to get the support to make this crazy film happen. The main idea for Sleep Dealer came to me way back in 1997. I was reading an article in Wired magazine. The article was about telecommuting and this idea that in the future, everyone could work from home. Well, coming from a family that's half immigrants, I started thinking about them and could they work from home? I came up with this nightmare fantasy of a world of telecommuting immigrants where Latin American immigrants would stay in their home countries and beam their labor to America over the net and fulfill a kind of dark American dream, work without the workers. I wasn't sure how to express that idea, though, until I saw this footage. This is footage of the Bracero program. The Bracero program was a government initiative to bring Mexican workers to America during World War II to work in the fields. When the harvest was done, they were sent home. This is footage from the Prelinger archives. If you look that up on the internet, it's really worth checking out. In any case, these images are from my short film, which promotes an updated Bracero program, something called the Psy Bracero program. These workers will then be able to remotely control robotic farm workers, known as Psy Braceros, from their village in Mexico. These robotic workers are specially designed by the U.S. Department of Labor to be optimized for farm tasks. I made this short Using film and put it up on the internet, and people took it seriously. Several Mexico, journalists wrote about it like it was a real internet, business model. Decide what fruit is ripe, what branch needs pruning, making this short satire got me thinking about maybe one day making worker, a bigger movie, a real science fiction stick. that would be the first the to American look at the future from the point of view of the South. The In 1998, I received a $35,000 grant from the Rockefeller Foundation. I tried to make this feature film on that budget. I started with my friend Chico McMurtry and we built the robots. But the movie was impossible to make with that amount of money. Just two images from that shoot survived and made it into the final film. These are those. In 2001, my script was accepted to the Sundance Institute's writing and directing programs. That support was key to being able to make this film. But the visual work actually started with something a lot simpler. A little digital camera. When I was making documentaries in the border regions, I took these photos. They're all images of Tijuana. At night, I love doing long exposures, leaving the shutter open for five seconds, seven seconds. You get these pools of color and almost Blade Runner look. Along the way, without knowing it, I was also finding locations that would ultimately be part of Sleep Dealer. So I had footage of these rough robots, I had footage from Sundance, I had these still photographs, and I had some artwork. I started to make drawings of what this futuristic world might look like. In those drawings, I sort of honed in on the idea that the worker should look kind of like a marionette suspended from these cables. I also was thinking about how to avoid the trap that a lot of science fictions fall into when they put their characters in virtual reality goggles. I did these drawings to try to think of a more subtle way in which my character could be immersed. To produce the images, I work in a kind of hybrid style. I draw on paper, then scan those drawings, and then color them and clean them up digitally. To demonstrate to any potential producer or investor that I could actually pull off this crazy vision, I wanted to create a digital process so that I could work out some of the more complicated scenes for no money. By drawing on paper and using this program called Poser, which lets you pose digital humans and then kicks out these black and white drawings of them, 
by using those techniques to create images and then After Effects and Final Cut Pro to put them together, I was able to produce rough versions of the scenes entirely on my own. This is the scene when there's an accident in the factory. In this version, you can see at the beginning Nemo looking through his robot's eyes and seeing his reflection as a machine. Also seeing this digital scene, how I was hoping to use the handheld camera to add a sense of chaos. Call an ambulance, kid. We'll call an ambulance once he's out of there. Someone grab his ankles. One quick thing: when I made these animated scenes years ago, I used music that I just stole from other movies. Here, of course, I'm using the score from Sleep Dealer done by Tom and Andy, which is, is music that I love. This is a digital version of the scene in which Memo's house is attacked by the drones. Again, you can see here the early structure of the scene, which is that they watched the a whole thing on TV. This show contains depictions of graphic violence against evildoers. If you have any young children, you don't want them to miss it. <laughs> boom! Boom! <laughs> We're looking for the source of an illegal signal, a rebel intercept. We have a positive lock. This is it. Target confirmed. Engage auto target. Auto target engaged. Now hit it! Hit it! Got it. Target destroyed. We've got one suspect wounded. Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Auto target engaged. One less bad guy. So with all of these materials in hand, still photographs, drawings, storyboards, plus the script and the scenes I shot at the Sundance Lab, I was able to finally get a producer on board, Anthony Bregman, and he was able to find the support of an investor. That whole story is at the end of the audio commentary. We went back to Tijuana to start location scouting. This time I went with a crew, but with my same documentary strategy. These are images from the location scouting. The production designer did drawings of the drones, and these drawings were based on real military drones from today. Artists made models of the drones and, and test renderings of what it should all look like at the end. This is a drawing that I'd done of the construction robot back in the 90s. Then in 2006, the visual effects department started brainstorming with me on final designs. First we worked on paper and then in rough 3D.
This is the final design that we settled on. We wanted it to look really industrial, but to have just a hint of emotion, like Wall-E, designed by John Deere. These are some of the first draft animations with the final robot design. Our storyboard artist did this concept art for the exterior of the factory, and we set it in this real landscape, essentially right on top of a real factory in Tijuana. For the interior of the factory set, the production designer did this drawing, and the art department, of course, built the set. You can see it was only four workers on either side. The mirror makes it look like eight. In post-production, Mark Russell and the visual effects team made it into infinity. And this is the first test of Luce's memory test. This is my final timeline for the Sleep Dealer edit in Final Cut Pro. The truth is, this film wouldn't exist without many, many other people. David Riker with me on the script, Lisa Rinsler shooting the film. Filmmaking is a tribal activity. But in terms of getting this project off the ground, the most useful lesson was to work on a sketch pad. Often filmmakers, you know, we wait for a budget. We feel like we have to. But the truth is, the big stuff, the story, the composition of images, the way they'd be sequenced, the structure of a scene, the sound, so much of this we can do at home, on our computers, and we can sketch and feel at least like we're making progress towards our film. And that, to me, was the big lesson, was to use the sketchpad to have fun and to convince people that this movie could be made. There's a lot more information on the whole process on the audio commentary on this DVD. Here's a final few images. Uh, in Mexico, when you wrap your first film, they dump green paint on you. Uh, they told me it happens to everybody. 